Game developers, more specifically map designers, are prime manipulators. People who could convince even the most mentally stalwart to jump right off a bridge, all because they made the streetlight brighter at the break in the guardrail. Some common tactics good map designers use is as mentioned, lighting, but also sound cues and just some good old fashioned visual hierarchy. Where the most important elements are literally just larger and brighter than the world around it. The best examples of premium map design can be found within any of From Software's catalog, most notably Dark Souls 1 and, most recently, Elden Ring. Gander in this example from Elden Ring. The moment that you take your first step out of the tutorial area, you are instantly greeted with the very end of the game at the Erd Tree. Stormvale Castle can be seen too, the corrupted scarlet rot fields of Kaelid, the great crumbling Faru Mazula, and a small chunk of the Divine Towers all at the very beginning, and you'd be none the wiser that they're even important, or just something beyond set dressing, until you actually get to the places and figure out finally that this was important all along. And you see this just at the beginning. To be fair, most of all games never let you venture anywhere remotely to the degree of a FromSoft game, where they actively take the big and important areas and strategically place them in ways where you can either always see them, creating a subconscious goal always within view, or direct you to a scenic area where you can take in the vista. The most notable being right after you exit Stormvale Castle, where you can see the entire rest of the game, barring Kaled. To the right is the capital city Landil. Even further to the right is the Mountain of the Giants, where the Great Cauldron is. Behind Landale is the lava-strewn Mount Gelmir. To the left of the volcano is, faintly, the Three Sisters Rise, where you meet Rani. And right dead in the center of Leonia is Raya Lucaria, the College of Sorcerers. To the left of that lies the Cathedral of Manus Celis, where you give Rani something really special that I won't spoil. All of this right after you defeat Godric the Grafted. Someone whom of which was treated almost like he was the end of the game just in that area. I swear, this is what makes From Software so magical. Their ability to tell a story through an intelligent, non-direct mean, framing it completely through visuals alone, even if no NPC ever talked to you, I guarantee that you would eventually make it to where you had to go through nothing else but the use of clever level design and an understanding of visual hierarchy. But wait, you just exclaimed, this video was supposed to be about cat game, where are the toe beans? In all caps, hath no fear, viewer, because the cat game is right here. Walled City 99 is engulfed in mystery. Humanity has been gone for what could be a millennia, either all killed from a mysterious plague or have just simply left one day. Stray sees our unnamed orange tabby cat plunged into this mysterious, hermetically sealed cityscape, constantly bathed in darkness. Inhabited by bipedal and sentient helper bots who have evolved all on their own, even creating a new language which is comprised of hundreds of human languages, the most notable being Japanese, Korean, and funnily enough, I think some Farsi too. Beyond the robot inhabitants lie the ever so half life inspired Zerks, the only living thing left in the city, presumably, barring our furry protagonist, of course. They multiply and spread like a cancer, ever spawning, never the provider of levity, consumers of all and subservient to none, a hive mind with only one objective, to consume. Stray sees the player traverse the neon city with nary a map nor compass, relying exclusively on visual hierarchy and lighting. Truly a risky play by B12, the devs, but if done correctly, can provide the consumer with an unequivocal dosage of immersion. Thankfully, I am as happy as can be to be able to deliver the good news that this game rocks the house with its methods to deliver unto the player the path forward every time, through nothing else but good direction. 
Starting simple, we are taught with our cat brains to simply follow the pretty lights strewn out by an unknown redeemer, beginning easily with bright neon signs that decorate the path ahead, all surrounded by nothing but dark grays, stuff that really, really contrasts the bright and in-your-face signage, to string lights that lead upward to salvation, away from the dangers of falling into the dark abyss below. These moments become incredibly handy later on, when danger finally unveils itself in the form of a literal flood of zerks, their primary color being what slathers their territory, a pulsating and fleshy orange hue, absolutely disgusting, but in the best way possible, because now, our subconscious knows what to avoid at all times. All we have to do is follow the lights set out in front of us that are a different color from the zerks. We follow neutrals, starkly contrasting to the orange, shades of whites and blues, the colors used for hope and solace. But furthermore, visual hierarchy guides us simply in the moments of mundanity as well. The slums is the first of three hub areas you encounter throughout your journey in Walled City 99, crowned also as the most dense by far. We entered the slums through the dead city, an area marred by the pustule protozerk egg sacs and the sinewy tendrils of cancerous orange flesh, ever spreading and radiating its red-orange aura. From the slums leads into the residential district, only accessible after some general problem solving and exploration within the safe zone. But before you even reach that, you must delve into the heavily infested area of city only known as the rooftops. Right here, we're struck with some of that same energy which emanates from the Souls series. Probably the most stark example of visual hierarchy as it is responsible for loosely guiding the player in the direction of the objective. One lone, tall, under construction building, dominating the light polluted skyline. Two massive halogenic construction lights illuminate the tarp, almost as if screaming this is where you need to go. But if that still wasn't enough, look at the cranes above you. The one directly overhead points straight to the tip of the next one, and then that creates a path straight to the third crane, which is then pointing directly to where you need to go, the very tippity top of the unfinished building. But even more besides that, the third crane doesn't only point at the building, you actually go and cross the crane yourself. It's a little on the nose, but that's awesome still. It's funny because you think we're done, no. You need only direct your gaze to this clip of me standing still, focus on the main building, and now bring back and widen your peripheral. The focal point of this still shot is of course the tall and bright tower, but notice what's around it, the encapsulating it. I see a spiral created entirely out of a walled city 99 ceiling, the aforementioned cranes, and finally the very buildings framing the entire scene below them. Blue 12 used a f***ing Fibonacci sequence, be it intentional or not, to tell you exactly where you needed to go. This is some next level grade A artistry that I am afraid people unlike us, the gamers, will never notice and appreciate thereafter. Just some truly magnificent level design akin only to the people whose efforts I hold more dearly to me than some family members, from software's pristine understanding of the art of design within a playable medium. But now. Time to cool off a bit, and talk about something less pretentious. <laughs> How Stray continues to play you, but in a more conventional means. We have already discussed visual hierarchy by means of size, aka visual weight, and lights which serve to guide us by simply being brighter and differently colored. For those already familiar with the wonderful game Mirror's Edge, I'll say one word and you'll nod in agreement. Red. Red is the color used by the game's mechanic called Runner Vision. Essentially, every traversable door, pipe, landing pad, and ledge is coated in the series signature hue. It tells you exactly where you need to go without literally telling you exactly where you need to go. It is incredibly smart, and only increases the factor of immersion by eliminating the need for a map and HUD. Stray is no different though. It takes an extra step in the immersion direction, with the use of a motion as well as the color. Throughout your playthrough, you'll notice that you're allowed to scale almost everything that looks climbable, especially in the hub areas. By that virtue, there are multiple ways of reaching most of your destinations. Look at the air conditioners unique to the others, the ones that feature a direct path to any given spot. Their colors are always either red or yellow, and are constantly blowing red ribbons. 
It is on the nose, yes, it is, but that's okay because sometimes it's all we need to go from lost, confused, sad, and scared to enlightened, confident, happy, and hopeful. I mean, just take a look at this. The developers are so confident in their map design and ability to telegraph the correct path to the player that they left in an option to simply turn off the jumping prompt. That's a little intense. Though, of course, they could have easily just have been considerate for YouTubers like me who need cinematic footage like this to not have a fat button prompt on screen the entire time. Pick your poison, I guess. Stray succeeded in many ways. For one, it is possibly the only game where you play as solely an animal worth its full price, which was a meager $35. If you haven't had the entire game spoiled by now, I highly, highly recommend you play it. You may just emerge how I did, expecting nothing else but an indie game with AAA graphics where you get to play as a cat. Only then finding out after that it may have been one of the freshest breaths of fresh air that's two freshes I've ever taken in my time consuming media on this dank, rotting earth since Elden Ring. You can find Stray on PlayStation 4 and 5 as well as Steam for, as mentioned earlier, $35. I wish I could say this video was sponsored by B12, the devs, or Annapurna, the publisher, but it's not, which is where you can come in. Join my malignant armada of fellow gamers just like you in our search for a promised land of gamerdom. It's free, just press the subscribe button if supporting me seems like a pretty nifty pastime. Of course, liking and especially sharing are the best ways to get me out there beyond a subscription, so if commitment's your vice, one of those is of course just fine too. I'll see you around soon. Thank you. Next video may just involve a certain spirit guide with daddy issues. See you then.